All right, so I got a good question the other day about creating interactive desktops and different ways that you could uh, track those interactions in Storyline. And so the user asked first about uh, using hotspots. Now, hotspots are great, right? They're invisible buttons that reside over your uh, uh, your slide objects, right? So even though they're this bright green right here, when you preview the file, you won't see anything. And you also have the control over uh, whether or not you want to show the hand cursor, right? So by default, the hand cursor is going to change when you mouse over a hotspot object. But if you don't want to sort of hint or give away that, that there's an object there that's clickable, you can disable that just by right clicking on it. So the only problem with the hotspots, hotspots certainly could add triggers um, and, and show feedback for specific objects. But the only problem is, even though they show up here in form view for uh, say a, a pick mini or a pick one, right? So the hotspots do show, you can see the, the red bounding box. They're not going to be tracked. So each time you preview the interaction, you're going to get an incorrect feedback because nothing's being registered as selected. And that's in part because hotspots don't have states, so there's no way to evaluate which hotspots are currently selected. So uh, not the best solution unless you want to provide specific feedback for each of the items, then you could uh, add new layers here and then give some additional feedback. Another op option uh, would be to use invisible shapes or transparent shapes, right? So if I right click that and I dial my transparency back down here, it's just a rectangle shape that has the transparency turned uh, all the way up. That's not a bad option. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is that you probably really want to name, name these appropriately here in your timeline. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of different rectangles, depending on how many objects you have on the desktop. A lot of rectangles or shapes without names, and it gets a little bit uh, messy when you're trying to make those selections here in form view. So the benefit, though, is that you can track these, right? They can register a selected state. Go ahead and just preview this one. And so you'll see that each of these has a slight shade to them, right? Just to indicate the uh, items been selected. You could go with a border or bounding box, uh, another type of way to show the selection. But uh, you can see that we can select and deselect each of these, right? So just another option for uh, creating that, that, that clickable or that interactive desktop look. And then finally, the other option is to use the image itself as the clickable objects. So what I've done here is taken the background graphic and cropped or duplicated the background several times and then cropped it for each of the objects. So how many objects do I have here? There's a tablet too, right? So here's how this process looks like. So if I just leave all those over there, you have your background graphic, just control C, control V, copy and paste. And then you want to make sure that the background graphic is perfectly in place, right? You know, if it's off in the, in the smallest uh, pixel, zero, make that at zero, zero, okay? Then it'll look a little awkward on the desk. So let's just say we want to uh, select the keyboard. We want to make a clickable object for that keyboard. I've got my duplicate copy right here. I'm going to call this one keyboard new, just since I already have a keyboard already on my, uh, my selected item. So with it in place, go to your format tab and then select crop. And then we can just crop around the keyboard. So we are still using the same image and there's a perfect selection around the keyboard, but yet you don't see that there's any, any graphic there. Now, what I did for the other objects was I added a custom state with a border, right? Just to indicate that there's an, an object there. So um, you don't have a selected state here, but what you'll notice is when you add that item, when I add this keyboard as a uh, as a viable choice, Storyline needs to give that a selected state. So if I don't already have one on there, Storyline's going to give it. So there's my new background, my new keyboard. If I jump back over here to slide view, there's my selected state and it has the glow. So if you don't want the glow and you want something else, just go to the format tab and then you can choose a picture effects, none, and maybe add a border or something. Right, so you can customize it any way you want just to show that it's currently selected or not, right? You can totally remove that and just keep the same image uh, visible. But just a couple options for uh, creating those interactive desktops using either invisible or transparent shapes, as well as using the actual image itself.